All right, hi everybody. My name is Juan Estrada and I am president of Lindale Neighborhood Association. Lindale Neighborhood is near Story and White in East San Jose. I'm also president of District 5 United. It's a coalition of neighborhood education and other leaders who strive to improve the quality of life in East San Jose. And I'm here to talk to you about a safe and strong neighborhood. Now, to become or stay a safe and strong neighborhood, here's what I found you need to do. You use tools to connect, to share information. You come together for meetings and events. You celebrate and recognize neighbors and you partner with others. First, I'm going to talk about tools. One of the tools is the first thing you see there, it's an email group. Get email addresses for your neighbors at any event that you hold. You all email each other using one email address. It's a quick and easy way to distribute information. And you could do that using Yahoo groups or your own domain name. For example, we have Lindale at districtfightunited.org. Another tool, and one, one which I love, is nextdoor.com. So nextdoor.com is like Facebook, but for your neighborhood. It's a free, private, social media site for neighborhoods. Only your neighbors can join your neighborhood group. Your friends, relatives cannot join unless they live in your neighborhood. And you use it to share information, to report suspicious things. Uh, as you can see in the screenshot, someone just joined the other day. Robert Dolce commented about parking tickets. We had a parking compliance officer out issuing tickets, and we were glad because they were blocking handicap ramps, they were blocking people's driveways, etc. And one thing that I found, and I suspect is true throughout the city, is because they're all your neighbors, no one is ever rude. And it's really cooperative, and it's people working together. And if you have not yet signed up for nextdoor.com, I encourage you to do it today. You'll find other people in your neighborhood already there. And one great thing about next door is you get every update via email as well. So you don't have to log in to see what's going on. You're going to get an update via email. I'm going to give you two examples. One example of next door use was there were three teenagers who apparently were going door to door pretending they were looking for a friend. And so they went to one house and Someone answered the door. They went to the next house and someone was home, but it didn't make noise. So they pretended they were looking for a friend and that's when they broke in. Um, and luckily the elderly woman who was there scared them off uh, and they left. And the neighbor posted it on next door. So right away, everybody knew that there were these three teenagers up to no good in our neighborhood. Another instance uh, happened to me. I had, um, a gentleman who came to the door and said he was a salesman and uh, wanted to know more information about my alarm system uh, and wanted to do a survey uh, of the house. I told him, you know what, I'm sorry, it sounds suspicious, no thanks. And he had a hard time taking the no and he didn't leave, he continued the pitch. Actually what I told him is, you know, I'm gonna count to three and then I'm calling the police. And he ended up leaving and I wasn't afraid of this guy but I didn't want him going to the neighbor's houses because they might be. Uh, and my mistake was opening the door. Um, and if they open the door and this guy doesn't leave, who knows what could happen. So I issued an alert on next door. So, and uh, via our email group, so that everybody would know there's this bald guy, he's going door, door to door, don't open the door. Um, and so that's a great use of both email and nextdoor.com. Next, we have flyers and newsletters and so then now we have a monthly newsletter we're lucky we have a volunteer who writes the article we have a volunteer who coordinates with our council office to get copies made to distribute and we have a volunteer who coordinates our volunteer newsletter deliverer and we also have a uh, about 20 volunteer newsletter deliverers but if you don't have all of that or if you're just starting out just send it via email or post it on next door. We also do an annual survey. We usually hand the survey out uh, during our dumpster day, which is when we get a couple of dumpster bins so that 
neighbors could throw out their junk so that they don't throw it in the street or they don't keep it in the backyard and it's dangerous for their kids. Um, everyone who wants to dump fills out a survey. It can be anonymous, um, but we also ask for contact information. And we do this to find out what neighbors are concerned about. We know what we're concerned about, but when we get uh, 80 neighbors that come to a dumpster day, we reach more people and we really want to know what they think. So that's another tool that you can do, as you can see via paper, or email the questions to everybody. The San Jose Clean app. This is a great app. It's for your smartphone. And what you can do with this app is take a picture of graffiti, enter the address, and hit submit. And within one business day, even on Saturdays, I found, they will come out and clean up the graffiti. It's great. And I even, I, I was testing it and I thought, let me see how many I can report and they still clean up. And I went around the neighborhood. I reported about 15 instances. They were gone the next day. So this is a great app. You can report other issues as you can see. I recommend you use it if you have a smartphone. It's free. We also use NeighborWalk. NeighborWalk is a group of neighbors who walk into the neighborhood to identify concerns. And what we did, uh, because we are volunteers with limited resources, is we handed it off to our council office and said, here's what we noticed. Please look into this, see what you can do, report back at our next neighborhood association meeting. And we're fortunate our council office has been responsive when we had issues. So I recommend that you do a neighbor walk. It's also a great way to meet neighbors. You invite everybody, whether via the email group or next door, they come out, you meet people you've never met, and now you know each other. A strong neighborhood also holds events, monthly meetings or bi-monthly meetings, and recognizes volunteers. I've put a list of sample events up here. I only mentioned a couple. We hold monthly meetings, except for November and December because of the holidays. And we also hold a national night out event. This is the second Tuesday in August when we invite neighbors to come celebrate. And really it's meant to take a stand against crime, to let criminals know we stand united. This is the wrong neighborhood. The typical meeting agenda, we ask neighbors to introduce themselves. We invite public officials such as the council member's office or the county supervisor's office. And we have one major presentation. Now, a safe and strong neighborhood partner with your council office, whoever your council member is, and with city department and county departments if appropriate. And it's important, we're, we're volunteers usually, right? And we have limited resources. And when we can rely on our partners, it helps. We expect our council members staff to follow up on issues like we need lights on a bridge because people are hanging out there late at night and up to no good and now the onus is on our council office please figure out what you can do please report back at our next meeting and what we found is uh your council office wants safe and strong neighborhoods in their district and they're more than willing to help you you just have to reach out uh, and the same with other departments obviously san jose police department Department of Transportation, if there's speeding or other issues in your neighborhood. And I'll just point out that sometimes due to limited resources, a city department cannot be as responsive as they wish they could. And we found that by reaching out to our council office, they can sometimes prod them to move you up the list. So I do recommend again partnering with both. I also recommend that you partner with a district-wide coalition. Um, there are district-wide coalitions in eight out of the 10 districts. Uh, these are coalitions of neighborhood associations or groups. And these are people that you can share ideas with that can support you and we recommend that you partner with them. In summary, um, everyone wants a safe and strong neighborhood. You can use tools to share information, to report information. You should hold events to come together to celebrate or share information. And uh, you should partner with your council office, city department, everybody who's eager to work together to keep your neighborhood safe and strong.